Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number. 162 day day 3162 the 3 is here to signify the fact that we are in the third edition third edition day, day number 162 we are in the process of solving the problems from the second practice test practices number 2 on page number 490 Yesterday we did problem number 1 through 5 and today we'll pick up from page number 490 from problem number 6. Before we get going, before we get going, yesterday when we were doing problem number 4, if you turn to the previous page, problem number 4, when we were, when we were working through it on problem number 4, uh, when we finished the problem, I, I shared with you the percentile in, uh, percentage of the people who got this question right. And it turned out that problem number four, fewer than 41% got it right, which is a matter of concern. The well, vast majority, almost almost, almost 60%, almost three-fifths of the people are getting it wrong. And I made a remark at that point that if you happen to be one of those people who are still, who is, who is still struggling uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the concept of Venn diagram, set theory, Make sure you, if you have not done so already, make sure you watch these videos, day number 91 through 95, day 3091 through 95, there are five videos dealing with Venn diagram, set theory, make sure you are able to do all of those problems in those five videos, and if you are able to do the problems in these five videos, then problem number four should not give you difficulty. Do you understand? Number six. In number six we are told, Rather, we are given an equation. What we are given here is this. We are given an equation x plus 3 times x minus 4, we are told, is equal to 0. And we are being asked to compare in column A the product xy and in column B simply negative 12. Negative 12. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. Well, when we are, before we get going, let's, let's talk about something simpler. When we are told that a times b equals to 0, what does it tell us? Well, it tells us that there are two possible scenarios. There are two possible scenarios. Either, either a is equal to 0 or, or b is equal to 0. Because if a is equal to 0, it doesn't matter what b is. Any number times 0 is 0. Similarly, when b is equal, b is equal to 0, it doesn't matter what a is. And of course, there is a third scenario, which is they are both equal to zero. They are both equal to zero. So there are three possible scenarios when you're told, when we are told that the product of two quantities is equal to zero, then either the first quantity is equal to zero, and in which case it doesn't matter what the second quantity is, or the second quantity is equal to zero, y minus four is equal to zero, and it doesn't matter what x is and what this quantity is, or they are both equal to zero. That's what it, that's what we need to understand to arrive at the right conclusion here. Do you understand? And at the end, when I give you the percentile, you will see why the percentile was so low. Is because of this thing. Understand that this is not, we're not saying when that somebody tells you, when somebody tells us that a times b is equal to zero, that does not imply that a and b at the same time need to be zero. They do not both need to be equal to zero at the same time. Although it is possible, but it's not a requirement. It, it is, it is one, of the, one of the third scenario. It implies that either a is equal to zero or b is equal to 0 or they are both 0. To simply say that a times b equals 0 means they are both equal to 0, that is wrong. Which is why people are getting this question wrong. So let's do it properly, shall we? So here what this implies is that, here what it implies is that either, either the first quantity x plus 3 is equal to 0 or, or, I left no room for myself to work on it, or the second quantity y minus 4 is equal to 0. 
If it turns out that if x plus 3 is equal to 0, if it turns out the first quantity is 0, x plus 3 is equal to 0, then what that implies in, in turn, since I have no room down here, what it turn it implies is that x must be negative 3. You see? If x is negative 3, if x is negative 3, it doesn't matter. It, if x is negative 3, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. In that case, it doesn't matter what this quantity is. 0 times anything is 0. So that's one possibility. That x is equal to negative 3. But what about y? Well, maybe y is positive 3. Who knows? Y could be anything they want to. Y could be anything. If that's the case, if that's the case, we get negative 9. We get negative 9. And negative 9 is more than negative 12. The answer is A. But who knows? Maybe x is negative 3. Not maybe. If x, if this quantity happens to be 0, which will imply that x is negative 3. So maybe x is negative 3. It doesn't matter what y is. Maybe y, instead of, instead of being instead of being positive 3, maybe y is negative 3. Also, x is negative 3, in which case negative 3 plus positive 3 would be 0, and y is also negative 3. So here we have 0 times negative 7. 0 times negative 7 would be 0. Once x is negative 3, it does not matter what y is. It plays no role. So maybe that is possible, in which case negative 3 times negative 2 would be positive 9. Oh, we were trying to do the other way, weren't we? We were trying to make the other way. So I, I forgot that we, we already had a situation. We are trying to make it the other way. So let's make it the other way. Okay, here. Watch how I'm, how I'm going to fix it. Maybe, maybe, maybe instead of instead of y being positive three, maybe y is positive three three million. In which case, this let, let, let's not be silly. Maybe y is positive thirty. In which case, instead of being negative nine, we'll have a negative ninety. And now, b is greater. That's it. The answer is D. We don't have to do any other analysis. We don't have to do any other analysis. That's what it is. No. Instead of starting out with X, we could have worked with this quantity. Let's work with this quantity and re let's redo the problem. The answer is D, as you can see. Let's work with this quantity right now and let's do the problem all over again from scratch. Okay? We're going to do it from scratch and this time we'll work with this guy. So, if, if, if Y minus 4 is equal to 0, in which case, it makes no difference what x is. x can be anything it wants to be, as long as you tell me that, that y is equal to 4. Because if y, minus, if y minus 4 is equal to 0, that implies that y is equal to 4. If we, put, if we put y is equal to 4 in this equation here, 4 minus 4 is 0. So in this case here, the y is, y is positive 4. Did you see? 4 minus 4 would be 0. So if y is positive 4, what about x? How much is x? We don't know. We have no idea what x is. X can, as, as I keep repeating like a parent, x can be anything it wants to be. Maybe x is negative 3. In which case, x negative 3 and a positive 4 will give us the answer of c. Or maybe instead of negative 3, maybe x is negative 30. In which case, we'll get negative 120, in which case the answer would be b. Or maybe x is positive 3. Positive 3 and positive 4 is positive 12. Here we have negative proof, so maybe it's A. But we don't have to do this, this much analysis. When we did the first one, and we, when we showed two scenarios with the X, and we got a conflicting answer, we were done. I was do, doing this thing just for your understanding. Do you understand? That's all. The answer is D. The answer is D. And same as number four, same as number four, this was number six. This was problem number six. And you will see that the people's performance in this question is no different than number four. Only 42% got it right. Only 42% of the people got it right. Vast majority of the people missed it because they don't quite understand that simple equation. What does it imply? What does it imply when you tell me that P times Q is equal to zero? If P times Q is equal to zero, then they do not both need to be zero. Either P is equal to zero in which case it doesn't matter what Q is, or Q is equal to zero, in which case it doesn't matter what P is. Or, of course, there is always a third scenario that they were both zero. Do you understand? Let's do next, number seven. Number seven. Number seven, we are told that Jeff Guy spent 
of his income which happens to be $630 on a guitar he wanted to buy a guitar one month he decided to go ahead and buy one and that particular month whatever his monthly income was he realized that he had spent 15% of his income on the guitar and the guitar happened to cost $630 in other words $630 represents here 15% of his income. With me? Column A says the amount of money the amount of money that that he that he did this is where you have to pay attention. In this in this exam it's just a matter of paying attention and concentration. That's what is required here. The the Pure concentration is what is required here. Your, your mind cannot lapse, your attention cannot lapse because if you miss one word, you will get it wrong. It says the amount of money that he did not, the amount of money he did not spend on guitar. And of course, in a real exam, they're not going to underline it and, and make it capital, and somebody is going to stand next to you and shout at you in your ear, not. They're not going to do that. You just have to pay attention. So the amount of money that he did not spend on guitar. Well, well we know he spent 15% of his income on guitar. Well, if he spent 15% on the guitar, it, he did not spend 85% of his income. We have to figure out what 85% of his income is. That's what we need to figure out here. In column A, what goes here is the 85% of the income. If you can figure that out, that's what we're looking for. And in column B, we have 3,000. 3,570. So let's figure out 85% of income, shall we? Let's do it right here. That's why I left the room here. So let's do it right here in the middle. So we know, we know 15%, but oh, that's going to be too crowded. Let's not do it in the middle. Let's not do it in the middle. So the amount of money he did not spend on the guitar, that's 85% of the income. So we want to find out what 85% of his income is given the fact that 15% we are told is 630 so 15% we know 15% we know represents 630 are you with me? let's divide both sides by 3 if we divide both sides by 3 if 15% is 630 then one third of that amount 5% must be one third of that amount which is simply 210 are you still with me? We are not interested in finding out what 5% of the income is. We want to find out what 85% of the income is. How many 5 in the 85? Do you know? How many 5 in the 85? Do you? Or oh, me neither. Me neither. Let's find out together. Shall we? Let's learn together. Well, I do know, I do know that 25, 25 is 100. That I do know. I also know that 3 fives, 3 fives are 15. 3 fives are 15. If 3 fives are 15, if 3 fives are 15 and 20 fives are 100, so if you subtract 3 fives, if you subtract 3 fives from 20 fives, what, will be what we will be left over is 17 fives, and that will be 85. Or we could have simply divided 85 by, 85 by 5 and figure out how many times it goes. Do you understand? So, like this, just divide 85 by 5. How many fives in the 8? 8 has 1 5. 8 has 1 5. After we take away 5 from the 8, what do we have? We have a remainder of 3. What happens to 3? What happens to that 3? That 3 goes and joins the 5s and becomes a 35. And 35 has 7 5s. 7 5s are 35, as you can see. In other words, in other words, we don't want 5%, we want 85%. So let's just multiply, let's just multiply both sides by 17. Let's just multiply both sides by 17. Voila. That's it. Now we have now we have here 17 times 5. For 17 times 5, we just found out is 85. So 85 percent of his income must be called 210 times 17. 210 times 17. Let's find out what that is, shall we? Let's find out at the bottom here. So 21, 21 times 17. Yes. 17 times 1 is just 17. 
hold the unit digit. 17 times 2 is what we're looking for. 7 twos are 14. 4. Carry 1. 7. How can I just... How can I have so much difficulty multiplying? 7 twos are 14. 4. Carry 1. And... I don't know how to multiply. I'm drawing a blank. I don't like it. I don't like it. I should have just stuck with what I was going to do. Okay, I'm just going to stick with what I was going to do. I want 2117. How many 17s do we want? We want 2117. We'll worry about a zero at the end. We want 2117. Are you with me? 1017 is we know. 1017 is 170. Another 1017 will be another 170. So 170 plus 170 should represent 2017. We don't want 2017, so I want 2117. 21 times 17. Let's add one more 17. We get 7, 7 plus 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15, 5, carry 1, and we get a 3. And now, understand, understand that we had left out, understand that we had left out this 0. So we have to stick the 0 back in. Because this, this, this quantity represents, this quantity represents 2117. We don't want 2117, we want 21017. So it's 3000, 3570, which is same as column B. Which is the same as column B. And this where we started out was was column A. So it turns out column A equals column B. The answer is C. Answer is C. I'm gonna give it one more go, okay? Do not laugh if I muck it up again. Okay, do not laugh at me. I'm gonna try one more time. We were doing 17 times 20, or rather 21 times 17. Oh that's my problem was. My problem was I was trying to multiply by 17 altogether. And we could have done it too. Let me show you. Let me show you how to do that in one shot. Okay. So, 21 times 17. 21 times 17. See if you can follow me. Okay. First, we'll do the traditional way here, and then we'll do then we'll do what I was about to do here. Okay. Let's do the traditional way here. Let's do the traditional way here. Traditional way, you do one digit at a time. You do unit digit and then the ten digits. So let's do traditional way. Seven ones are seven. 7 to the 14, hold the unit digit, we multiply by 1 now, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, and we get 7, 5, and 3, you see, 357, 357. Now I'm going to show you what I was, what I was going to do, which is why I got confused, because halfway through, I changed my mind, and I, then I was stuck. So let's do it together. This time, we're going to multiply by 17, not the 7, but 17. Okay, let's begin. 17 times 1 is 17. 7 Carry 1. One more time. 17 times 1 is 17. 17 times 1 is 17. 7. Carry 1. 17 times 2 is 34. 17 times 2 is 34 plus 1 is 35. Which is what I was trying to do and then halfway through as I said I got confused. Let's do the next one. Number 8. And the reason I got confused because I didn't want to do either of these methods to begin with. What I wanted to do was this one. I, I, this one goes faster for me. We are on number 8. If somebody asks you how much is 21 times 13, don't do 21 times 13, just add them. 10 13s are 130, another 10 13 will be under 30, 130, so it's just 130 plus 130 plus 13. It's much faster. Do you understand? Did I just say much faster? Do not say that to anyone. Do not tell anyone that I said that. What I meant to say is, it is faster. Do you understand? If my English teacher from the grade school were to listen to this, she would turn in her grave. Set A, sorry, the set, set S consists of five objects we are doing. Set A consists of five objects. So instead of talking about set A as five set S as five objects, let's make one up. Let's let's make up let's make up set S with five objects, shall we? Let's make it up with five objects. We can say five objects, we can say five elements, we can say five members is the same thing. Set S consists of five members, five elements. Five objects. Let's, let's call them 
A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E. You understand? Column A, we are told the number of number of subsets, number of subsets with just one element. How many number of subsets can we have? If set S consists of five elements, how many subset of S can we have containing only one object? I'm going to read verbatim now how they phrase it in the book. It says, the number of subset of S that consists of one object. Yeah, with just one object. That's pretty much what they said. Then in column B, in column B we have number of subsets, number of subsets consisting of four elements. And of course, when they say number of subsets consisting of four elements, of course it's understood, obviously, four of these five elements, obviously, because it's a subset. Whatever this set that we will we'll put here with four members in it, it will be a subset of that. In other words, all the members of this, this set here, whatever we put here, are present in this set. But the reverse is not true. All the members in set S are not, are not going to be present in a subset, because S set S is called the superset. Do you understand? This is very simple. How many subsets can we have with just one element? Well, obviously five of them. There is one set. There is one set. There is next one. There is next set with just one element. There is the next one with the one, just one element. And here is the next one with just one element. There you go. One, two, three, four, five. Obviously there are five of them. But the question is how many subsets can we come up with that contain four of these five elements? How many subsets can we make? can we come up with that contain four of these five elements? How many elements? Five elements. So what are the elements of set S? Set S has A, B, C, D, E. What does set S have? Set S has A, B, C, D, E. What does it have? It has element A, B, C, D, and S. Set S has five elements. A, B, C, D, E. How many does it have? Five of them. A, B, C, D, E. How many subsets can you come up with with just four elements? With just four elements. Well, it's very simple. Here they are. Here to here. Here we go. Are you ready? Here we go. Subset containing only four elements. Here we go. Don't pick that one. Don't pick that one. Don't pick C. Don't pick D. Don't pick E. Voila. We're done. So, first set, first subset rather, first subset consists of B, C, D, E. The second possibility, second subset will consist of A, C, D, E. The third subset will consist of A, B, D, E. Fourth subset will be A, B, C, E. And finally, the fifth subset will consist of A, B, C, D. How many subset does it have containing four elements? Five of them. Five of them. How many subset does this? How many subsets can we have with just one element? Five of them. Five versus five. The answer is C. They are both equal. We can have five subsets with exactly one element from set S, and we can have exactly five subset, subsets containing four elements. That's all. Uh, where can we put the percentile? This was number eight. Number eight that we just finished, it was only 28 percentile. 28 percent. The percentile was 28. You understand? More than 70% of the people missed it. And number 7, I never give you the percentile. Number 7 apparently was a straightforward question because 72% of the people got it right. It's almost the reverse, you see? Well, it's not almost the reverse, it is the reverse. The percentage of the people who got number 7 right is the same percentage of the people who got number 8 wrong. Or the percentage of people number that the percentage of people who got number 7 wrong is the percentage of the people who got number 8 right. Is the flip of it. Should we move on to number 9 or no? Just give me a second. Yeah, let's not do number 9, because number 9, yeah, we'll do number 9 and number 10 tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.